I'd like to welcome everyone to our monthly memorial service, Shotsky Hoyo, for August. I'd like to thank everyone who's made this service possible. Of course, Reverend Gibbs, our organist, Howard Hayes, the flowers, which are done by Kyoko Okura Gibbs, and the streaming of the service, done by both Alan Goto and Kathy Kumagai. First, we're gonna start with the recitation of names done by Reverend Gibbs. On the first Sunday of each month, we observe the monthly memorial service, Shotsky Hoyo, in honor of those members of our Buddhist community who have passed away during the respective month in which this service is being held. Sensei will now read the names of those loved ones who passed away in the month of August, in whose memory this morning's service is being conducted. For those of you observing today's service in recognition of family members or friends who have passed away, please come forward as Sensei reads the name of your departed loved one to offer incense in their honor. Thank you, Kathy. I will read the names on the uh, August Shosuke Hoyo list. These are the friends and members of the temple we know have passed on in the month of August. If you lost someone in the month of August and their name's not on the list, please let us know. There's no charge for this. We'll be happy to add that name. Now, we'll now read the names from the August Shosuke Hoyo list. Akita Sawako. Alai Fumio. Ala Shige Matsumi, Baba Oka Misako, Fuji Ruth Reiko, Fujimori William, Fujimoto Edward Hitoshi Fuzzy, Fujitaki Tom Takashi, Fukumoto Ritsu, Furumoto Fusae, Goto Chioso. Hamada Hiroshi, Hamano Yukio, excuse me, Hamano Yukie, Harabe Mikio, Hayashi Mika, Ige Gien Catherine, Ito Haru, Kamoto Hohichi, Kawahara Kumataro, Kawamoto Aki, Kawamoto Rikizo, Kawamoto Toshiko, Kawasaki Toshio, Kikawa Robert, Kimura Kiwa, Kitani Kazuo, Kobayashi N, Kobayashi Kenjiro, Konishi Hisato, Konishi Jo. Konishi Kanichi, Koro Hakomi, Koro Kotaro, Mikiuchi Osamu, Marumoto Satsu, Masumoto Kunizo, Matsumura Shima, Miyagi Shima Mariko, Nakamoto Hatsuyo, Nakano Hansuke, Nakano Miyako, Nishiyama Izumi, Ogawa Kame Kameichi, Ogawa Kameichi, Ogawa Kansaburo, Ogawa Michio, Ogura Kazuko, Okada Kuni, Okada Ryoko, Onishi Ikuo, Oshita Aki, Otani Atsushi, Otani Junichi, Otani Shizue, Oyama Kansaburo, Sakahara Mei Yaiko, Sakai Miyako, Shigeno Kazue, Shimoda Kunisuke, Shinmoto Miyokishi, Shubo Hitsuyo, Sogi Otomasu, 
Sugasawara, Honzo. Sunara, Kazuaki. Takenaka, Kenichi. Tanigawa, Tamayo. Terazawa, Masaichi. Tsuchiya, Koto. Umeta, Sueno. Yahara, Pusakichi. Yamaguchi, Dozo. Yamamoto, Kiyoshi. Yamane, Kamekichi. Yoneda, Hitoshi. Yoneda, Keiichi. Yoneda, Yuku. Yonesawa, Kiyoko. Thank you, Sensei. Could I have the Sangha please rise for our first meditative reading? We must search for the inner light, which is the infinite Buddha within. Nobody can find the Buddha for us. Each person must find the Buddha within him or herself. And when we find the Buddha, we realize that it was this Buddha, the great power of wisdom and compassion that has been operating within us throughout timeless time. And this is done by Reverend Kendu Tsuji. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Uh, please be seated. And Sensei will now lead us in sutra chanting. It will be Sambutsuke, page 33 in your service book. Namamidabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namadabutsu, Namitabutsu, Namandabutsu, Namamidabutsu, Namandabutsu. Busatsu daimuryo jukyo sanbutsuge kogen gigi ijin mugoku yo de enmyo Muyo tosha nichi gotten money to co enyo aisht non pe yunyaku jumoku yo rai yogen to se murin to gaku dion koru jipo Aimon Shojin Amai Chie Itoku Murio Shusho Kale Jintai Renen Shobutn Hokai Gujin Jinno Kugo Gaitai Mumio Yokonu Se son yomu nino shi shi shintoku muryo kukun kodai shi e jinmyo komyo iso shindo daisen anga sabutun sai sho ho o Kado shoji mi hu ge datn tu se joi kainin shojin yose sammai shi e ijo to se toku butn hu gyo shigan isai kuku is sa dayon ke shi ubutn yak 
Sukhen Nokuman Muryo Daisho Shunyo Goja Kuyo Isai Shito Shobutn Shunyo Gudo Tensho Hugaku Shinyo Goja Shobutn Sekai Bufu Kage Mushu Sekundo Komyo Shisho Tenshi Shokoku Nyode Shojin Ijin Nanryo Yoga Tabutun Kokudo Daichi Goshu Kimyo Dojo Chosetun Kokunyo Nai On Mimu Toto Tato Aimin Dodatun Isai Jipo Raisho Shinnetun Shodyo Ito Ga Koku Keraku Annon Kobutn Shinmyo Dega Shinsho Otsugan no Hi Rikisho Shoyoku Jippo Seison Chie Muge Joryo Shison Chiga Shingyo Keryo Shinshi Shoku Dokushu Agyo Shojin Minju Huke Naman Nabu Naman Nabu Naman Nabu Naman Nabu Naman Nabu Naman Nabu Gani Shiku Doku Yodo sei isai do anmo nai shin onyo Thank you, Sensei. Uh, will the Sangha please rise for our Gatha and remain standing for our reflective reading? The Gatha will be Ondok San, page 146 in your service book. Could everyone remain standing and turn to page 10 
and Sensei will lead us in the three treasures. The three treasures. How rare and wondrous it is to have been born into human life, and now I live it. How rare and wondrous it is to be able to listen to the Buddha Dharma, and now I am able to hear it. If I do not transcend the world of delusion in this life, when will I ever attain spiritual liberation? May I, along with the entire Sangha, with sincere heart and mind, rely on that which can be truly relied on in life, the three treasures. I rely I on the Buddha. Buddha. May, May I, I along with all, all sentient beings, awaken to the great path with my, my entire being, being and, and discover the highest aspiration, which is to become, become a Buddha. Buddha. I, I rely on the Dharma. May I, along with all sentient beings, deeply reflect on the meanings of sutras and gain and wisdom that is as deep and vast as the ocean. I rely on the Sangha. May I, along with all sentient beings, become one Sangha of life, able to move forward and live with the divine spirit that is in the Dharma. The unsurpassed, deep, and wondrous Dharma, even in millions of kalpas, is extremely difficult to encounter. But now I am able to experience and embrace it. May I come to understand and revere the true meaning of these positives. Namo Amidabhati. Namo Amidabhati. Namo Amidabhati. Please repeat it. Namo We will now hear a Dharma message by Reverend Gibbs, and the theme today is Living with Dignity. Well, good morning. Thank you. Thank you for attending the service. Thanks to those of you who are viewing us at home. As always, I will repeat some of these thanks. I must thank Alan Goto, our videographer, and for tech support. Kathy Kumagai, pr providing uh, tech support off campus. Uh, Kyoko Kura Gibbs for the flowers. Howard Hayes for playing organ today. Thank you very much. And uh, Kathy Mikuni for chairing our service. Now, as well as thanking all of you and thanking for the uh, members who are producing this service for you, I want to uh, remark that this is a sort of a solemn service because it's not only our Shotsuki Hoyo service for August, where we recall all those we've lost in the month of August, it's also the 78th anniversary of the bombing of Hiroshima today, exact anniversary, and in three days, the 78th anniversary of the bombing of Nagasaki. And some of you lost people in those bombings. And I've done funerals for people who uh, died uh, later of radiation poisoning from the Hiroshima bombing. I had kind of, I wondered, you know, people, me doing the service for them. But it, it, the families accepted me. They understood. <laughs> uh, but it, it was a horrible event, one of the worst events in human history. But for those who are here for the Shosuke Hoyo, for remembering specific members of your family and group of friends who passed in August, please accept my sincere, my sincere condolences. Uh, I, I, I am sorry that, for your loss. My uh, maternal grandmother passed away in August, August of uh, 1978. Um, she had a hard life. She was widowed at 28 and left with a six-year-old daughter to raise. Without a high school diploma or any significant job skills, still, she found, a ways, she found ways to survive. When my own mother was a sophomore in high school, she had to drop out of high school to take a job to support she and her mother. She worked as a telephone operator. She was good at it. Sometimes we have one particular memory associated with a friend or a relative who passed before us. And 
I remember this one thing my grandmother said, 1954, I'm five years old, and we're walking through a parking structure. That's one of the reasons I remember it, because this is the second time in my life before I was 20 that I was in a parking structure, right? I mean, I'm from Fresno. <laughs> there was plenty of par street parking, you know? So I, I, it's, it's odd for a little boy, gee, this is a building that you park your car in, how odd. And we're walking through it, and we'd been at a school carnival, a, a friend of my sister's, and uh, we passed this uh, new uh, shiny gray Oldsmobile. And my mother's kind of looking at it approvingly, and my grandmother says, that's a dignified looking automobile. You know, five years old, and I'm already going, you know, wait a minute, there's a disconnect here. That's a dignified looking automobile. A dignified car? Hmm, there's something else going on here, right? And it, it took me, and I thought I was about 65 to figure out what, what she had said. Um, <clears throat> she didn't want a car, she didn't drive. She wanted dignity. She wanted to feel dignity in her life. It's hard to feel dignity when you have to move from one undignified part-time job to another. Some of you are here to remember mothers and fathers, husbands and wives who suffered the considerable indignity of having been placed in concentration camps during World War II, put in prison for the fact of being Japanese. This should never have happened, but it did. The bomb should never have been dropped. The internment should never have happened. Passage I repeat sometimes from a, a, a simple detective novel with uh, this the Spencer series. Uh, uh, Spencer's, something terrible has happened to this nice person. And Spencer says to his girlfriend, the psychiatrist, says, things like this shouldn't happen. And she says, we don't live in a world of should and shouldn't. And his response is, I know, but we should. And that's the truth for us. The bomb shouldn't have been dropped. Our friends shouldn't have died. There should not have been an internment of Japanese Americans. We hold these uh, shoyo, Shotsuki Hoyo services in order to honor our deceased loved ones, in order to preserve a sense of dignity in our memory of them. Perhaps they're Buddhas now. If not, they will be one day. We too will be Buddhas one day. We will all be world-honored ones with that dignity that some of us have been longing for. Entering the realm of the Buddha, we will travel on dignified vehicles. We will be dignified vehicles for others. A Buddha is a noble vehicle for others. A Buddha is a person in whom the deepest potentials of, caution, of conscious life have flowered. A Buddha is a person in whom the deepest potentials of conscious living have flowered. A Buddha is a dignified and joyous being who is useful to others and useful in and of himself, herself, themselves. Now, all Buddhas are not exactly the same. You know, Shakyamuni Buddha had blue eyes and tan skin. They call it gold, but. He was of mixed heritage. He was a child of the invaders, the invaders from Iran who were Caucasian and uh, uh, had relatively light complexion and blue eyes, and the native Sudras who were darker complected and usually had black hair and brown eyes. And so he had black hair, blue eyes, and brown skin. Not every Buddha has brown skin, blue eyes, and black hair. <laughs> we're not all the same. And when we wake up, we won't be all the same. But anyone who has realized enlightenment will have incisive wisdom and tireless compassion. Any Buddha will be entirely free of prejudice. A person who is entirely free of prejudice is a Buddha. If we could only stop seeing life through the tinted glasses of our own prejudices, we too would be Buddhas. In fact, it is because we see life through the filter of our prejudices that we are deluded, and that we are making life hard for ourselves and hard for others, harder than it needs to be. 
to know that we are inclined to see things prejudicially, to see things in the light of the way we wish to view them, to n realize this and know this about ourselves could just maybe decrease our attachment to our own opinions. We may learn to take ourselves a little less seriously at some levels. It would be nice if we could just remove the filters, like taking off a pair of glasses. You know? Now I can see you better, but I can't read, so I put the glasses back on. But there is no way to just take off that filter of what I want and what I don't want. Uh, life is seen through that filter. My prejudices are the filter through which I have always seen the world, although some of the prejudices I have have changed over the years, and some, however, I have prejudged some things for some long time, as long as I can remember. I'm opposed to warfare. I was opposed to catastrophic weaponry as soon as I knew what it was. Should I start assessing all the evidence each time the U.S. is considering deploying troops? No. I decided already. I'm against it. I don't care where they're going. Don't go. I don't care who they're shooting at. Don't shoot at them. I don't care who they're risking their lives for us for. Don't do it. That's who I am. It's okay to be prejudiced sometimes, as long as you know it. As long as you know what your prejudice is and know that I just stand there. I can't prove it's better not to have wars. Can you prove every war should never have been fought? I can't prove that. I'm just opposed to it, that's all. It's a prejudice, but it's a good one. It doesn't rob anyone of their dignity. It actually secures their lives. The fundamental prejudice that we all have, the prejudice we all engage in, is discriminating that which benefits us and that which does not, that which I like and that which I do not. Unenlightened biological beings will always do this. Prior to Buddhahood, we will always see life colored by our hopes, desires, and fears. One day we will awaken to Buddhahood and see things truly, see things as they are. For now, we must remember that we usually see things as it pleases us to see them. Taking our own opinions so seriously, maybe we could learn to stop taking our opinions so seriously. If we could do this, we'd be less of a pain to others and less of a pain to ourselves. But the key thing, the sine qua non, that without which it doesn't work, is respecting the dignity of others. Dignity is the theme of this Dharma talk. Living with dignity is the title. This is our Shosuke Hoyo service for the month of August. We are remembering our loved ones who have preceded us. It's also my mother's birthday, so although she uh, passed away in November, I'm thinking of her today as well. She's been gone for 31 years. Since this is our Shosuke Hoyo service for the month of August, I'm thinking of my grandmother, who, Irene Pratt Trimmer Ryan, who passed away in August of 1979. She was robbed of her dignity, robbed of her sense of having dignity by poverty. Poverty can do that rob you of your sense of dignity. Poverty can strip away any sense of dignity. So let's share more. Let's be more fair in sharing what we have with others. Let's establish more equitable tax codes. Let's make sure that the gap between the income of a CEO and a line, uh, entry line, a entry level employee is not so very vast as it is now. Poverty robs people of their dignity. Some of the people whose names we read this morning were incarcerated during World War II for no sane reason beyond prejudice. Their dignity was compromised. They were mortified by incarceration, incarceration mortified by incarceration, by racial prejudice. So we should be motivated to oppose discrimination based on race. We should be opposed to discrimination based on race, gender identity, sexual orientation, or any such factor. Some of you lost relatives in the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. What a terrible loss. We must oppose the development and proliferation of catastrophic weaponry. Opposition two 
atomic and other catastrophic weaponry and the, op the opposition to any form of racial prejudice or prejudice against LBGTQ plus persons is an official position of our school of Buddhism. The two big schools of Jodo Shinshu, Nishi and Higashi, have both spoken out against uh, uh, homophobia, against gender prejudice, and against uh, all forms of racial prejudice. And uh, those of you who know about Japan, is, along with Jodo Shu, the Jodo Shinshu has been the great defender of the Barakomin people in, in Japan, who are a, a group that is <laughs> discriminated against and prejudiced due to what their ancestors did for a living. Just crazy stuff, you know. Prejudice is always crazy if you look at it carefully. We oppose catastrophic weaponry. We oppose racial discrimination officially, our denomination. So. But let me, before closing, let me dispel one uh, prejudice of North American convert Buddhists. That's, that's like me. <laughs> but a prejudice I've noticed with people like myself who started in Zen or Tibetan or followers of Thich Nhat Hanh, they, they, they'll say something which is wrong and they'll say, everything, everyone is valuable because they have Buddha nature. No, that's too long. Everyone is valuable. It doesn't matter if they have Buddha nature or not. It doesn't matter if they ever awaken or not. Every living thing matters. Everyone is worthy because they are. Every living thing has value because it is a living thing. Whether or not he, she, they ever wake up thoroughly to Buddhahood. So this is my message today. Is preserve your own dignity. Don't let people take it from you. Honor the dignity of others. Realize what robs people of dignity. War, prejudice, insensitivity. Let us move forward as one Sangha of life, one community of this life, as our reading today said. That will close my comments. I will close the Dharma message portion of the service with Gosho, saying the Buddha's name a few times. We rely upon the source of limitless wisdom and endless life. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Thank you. Thank you, Sensei, for a wonderful message and a reminder to us to remember the victims of the atomic bombings in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, which took place in the month of August. Could everyone rise for our closing reflective meditation? Remember one thing that you should not leave this earth until you have made it a little more beautiful, a little more lovelier, a little more loving. By Osho. Namami Davutsu. Namami Davutsu. Namami Davutsu. And if you'll all be seated, do we have any announcements today? I do have one announcement. I'd like to have Ren give stand-up because he's going off to college. I'll, I'll embarrass you for the last time. <laughs> he's going up to San Jose State University this coming weekend. So have fun, but don't forget to study. That's my mommy word. <laughs> my son had too much fun <laughs> his first year. No, don't do that. Don't, don't follow don't follow your father's example or my my son's example. Yeah. Yeah. Turn into my older son who played a lot of video games. He got into college and he actually studied. <laughs> so but have fun. Meet up, make a lot of new friends. Any other announcements? I think this will be our last service until August, uh, until September. And we will start September with another Shotsky Hoyo memorial service. It was fun.
Yeah, I have to. I, I had to go to the Barbie movie first, well, though. Uh, too bad about the American woman scene, but yeah. the Japanese scene was just fine going on. Like I was happy to watch the original cut. The Japanese scene was great. There was a lot of force to that one too. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So as as we said, Ren, have a lot of fun. <laughs> it's a great place. College is a wonderful, wonderful place to oh, grow and. It is because you know what? You, you get to get out of the house, but you don't have to work yet. So it's perfect. <laughs> so, anyway, I'd like to thank everybody for uh, their help during this service Reverend Gibbs, Kyoko Okuda Gibbs for the flowers, uh, Howard Hayes for the, being the organist, Alan Goto back there, and Kathy Kumagai for doing our streaming. And this is our last service for August. So please have a wonderful time. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. Could I have the guests stand up? Um, see? See, I forget something. I have to have, yeah. Huh? Mike and Mark, uh, so I hope you can come again and in September and kind of keep in touch with us. And we'll let you know where, you know, the classes are and things that you might be interested in participating in. Okay? We're a very friendly temple. <laughs> Thank you again for coming to service. Okay, well, at, yeah, if you haven't had a chance to offer incense, please go ahead and do so. And otherwise, have a safe afternoon. You know, keep out of the heat. Drink, uh, drink a lot of Gatorade, okay? Thank you very much. Bye-bye.